What's up everyone, Pear from Into Fly Fishing and welcome to our second video in our five part series on how to catch giant trevally on fly. In this video we'll be focusing on the knot. As you know, GTs put so much pressure on your gear, your entire line is really under so much pressure and tension. It's really important to choose the best knot for the application. If you haven't seen the rest of our videos in this series, please find them in the description down below. There are many ways to join your leader to your fly line and then again your fly line to your backing. I'm not going to cover all of these ways. I'm just going to show you what I use. It's a method that we used on Alphonse when I guided there and I've never in my life seen one break. I've used it in Sudan. I've used it in the Maldives now again. Never seen it break at all. The only downside to it is that it's relatively bulky as you can see there. I'll show you some close ups too. But it's relatively bulky but it's easy to do it's super reliable and that's what you want now the first connection i'm going to talk about is the knot in your backing my favorite knot here is called the double bimini twist and i use the double version because you increase the surface area that makes contact with your fly line and thus the pressure that is generated when fighting a fish or hooking into the bottom that pressure is distributed over a larger surface area. The key here is to make sure that the loop that's formed by the double bimini twist is large enough that you can pass your fly reel or a fly line spool through. That enables you to replace your fly line on the go in case you damage it. So sometimes what happens is a fish is just places so much pressure on your fly line and it just pops. Especially happens with older fly lines right where the running line and the head of the line joins together right there sometimes it just pops off so it helps to have a spare fly line that you can quickly replace have the fly line in your back backpack you can quickly put it on two minutes later you're fishing again and just keeps you on the water so this is just a simple knot it's not really a knot it's almost like a weave and it really is super strong i've never seen a break in my life ever now to the two connections on your fly line both the front and the back are the same and what you need to do is cut off the welded loop on both ends i know this is heartbreaking but it's not as heartbreaking as seeing a very big giant trevally swimming with your semper in the side of its mouth and you're not connected to it I've been there, I've done that, and I've got the t-shirt, and I can assure you, this is an absolute essential because the welded loops don't last as long or it's not as durable as other methods. Now, this is the method I use. Cut off front and back loops, and then get a piece of hollow cord braid. This is like a, a braid that's made from monofilament, or you also get Kevlar braid, material and then you run the fly line up into this hollow core braid and you double the fly line over and you secure the fly line this doubled over loop with three nail knots now, as you can see it's relatively bulky i'll show you a close-up of it but it's incredibly durable just keep the bulk in mind when you see a fish run and the fly line's getting less and less and less and you sort of anticipate that this backing knot is soon going to come through. Just make sure that you drop your rod so that during that brief period where the, this knot is going to shoot out of your fly line, you actually don't apply that much pressure. Just look after the knot. And I can assure you, this thing is super strong. You can definitely pull a call with this. I don't have a doubt about that. Let's talk about leader knots. So both the knot that you use to connect to the leader or to make a loop to connect it to the fly line and obviously then to tie in one of these flies onto the end of your leader. Now the main thing to keep in mind here is that this leader material is very stiff. We would like to give our beautiful flies that we've tied as much life as possible to entice that take. So the main type of knot that we use especially for the connection to the fly itself but onto the fly line too is a loop styled knot 
Another factor to consider is that if you tie a knot with such incredibly stiff material, especially like 120 or 150 pound or something like that, is that the knot doesn't always sit straight. And this will impact the way that your fly swims, especially when you retrieve it, it swims straight, and as you stop it actually gets a kink in the, in the knot again. So you also need to consider this when you're choosing one of your favorite knots. It goes without saying that the knot needs to be as strong as possible so you can apply a lot of pressure to this fish and two of my favorite knots that suit all of these first one is called the reverse Homer Rhodes this allows the fly to swim very straight but it is quite cumbersome to tie or not if you're really into it and you and you're used to tying it but it's better to tie when you're on the skiff or busy doing a tackle setup at the lodge or anything like that this is the knot that I tie and if I quickly want to tie on a leader or a fly and it really needs to happen quickly I'm standing in the surf and there's fish around I opt for the perfection loop I know that knots and connections probably isn't the most exciting thing or the first thing that pops into mind when you're thinking about how to target giant trevally on fly but let me assure you it's probably one of the most important and overlooked aspects of catching these fish Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications. Then we can let you know as soon as we release the other videos in this great little series. Until next time, cheers.